Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to CounterPoints. Ryan, how are you doing? Wonderful. Happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday to you. Now, there's a lot going on here because House, I was just going to say a House minority leader, but now Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy is set to meet with uh, President Biden today. And they're going to talk about whether we will default basically, on our debt and what the path might look like to get there. Ryan, there was one thing you wanted to mention at the top of the show, an interesting development and some of the biggest news of the last week. Oh, yeah, a couple of things, actually. So for, first of all, tonight in Memphis, um, there will uh, the funeral for Tyree Nichols uh, will be held. Uh, Kamala Harris has told the family that she will be there uh, to speak. Uh, Reverend Al Sharpton is going to lead the event. Uh, organizers said they expect something like 2,500 people to go, even though... Uh, Memphis is under an ice storm uh, mm. at the moment. It'll be uh, right in uh, right in downtown Memphis. Uh, we're also uh, c coming up to the culmination of the fight over Ilhan Omar's seat on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, you you had uh, Matt, Matt Gates come out and say that he's undecided, and I'm I'm curious what your sense from House Republicans is. Are there people like Gates? I think Gates might, in principle. Like, think it's a bad idea to start kicking people off committees uh, for you know, on a partisan vote because you disagree with something they said. Uh, because you know who would be one of the first people that would be kicked off in reverse? Him. Uh, what What's your sense of whether or not McCarthy's going to have the votes? Because he's it, it's it looks it looks like he's wobbly, but he he said today or he said on Tuesday uh, when asked in the hallway that yes, I have the votes. You know, this is an interesting case study because there's a huge distinction between Ilhan Omar and what happened with Eric Swalwell and Adam Schiff on intelligence committees because they have both, I think, demonstrated really poor judgment in that arena. And you can look at Adam Schiff, I'll talk about this a little in my monologue, just being utterly unqualified and making it egregious, doesn't even begin to describe the lapses in judgment that he's had over the last several years. Whereas they're upset with, uh, with Ilhan Omar over, over um, this interpretation of what constitutes anti-Semitism, whether or not they believe that Ilhan Omar, as she said over the weekend, did not understand the tropes and was sort of unintentionally offensive with her language, um, or if, if she genuinely harbors some anti-Semitic beliefs and is willing to publicly say them, um, that's a different case study than lacking a qualification. So when Gates and Ken Buck, who we've had on, Crystal and Sager have had on, say, I don't believe in, in punting people just to get even with Democrats mm -hmm. on this case, but not the others, that is really interesting. You know, and Republicans will say, well, Democrats started it. Uh, they had, because, you know, they kicked Gosar and, yeah. uh, and Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor, Taylor Green. Green off. That was a bipartisan vote, which means it's a slightly different precedent than kicking people off by a partisan vote. The Intelligence Committee is a separate, uh, is, is a separate precedent because the speaker can kind of unilaterally decide who goes on there. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Omar, it just really does seem like, like you said, they don't like her. Well, yeah, and listen, to, I mean, this is one of the biggest disputes in politics right now is how we define bigotry, how we define racism, how we define anti-Semitism. And I think Republicans um, have had a, a sort of experience over the last several years that shows them very clearly how easily those definitions can be inflated against them and their voters because it happens all of the time. How do they square in their minds this, they're, they're driven by this anti-wokeness, like that's the thing that gets them out of bed in the morning is fighting the wokes. And they're gonna cancel somebody for something they said off of a committee? Like, that, like uh, in their heads, is, is that something that conflicts? Or in their minds, it, there's just, there's a Palestinian exception to, to all of this and it doesn't even kind of Right, raised to the level of something that they need to work out in their own minds? I think there are case studies, especially on campuses, in which proponents or opponents of cancel culture have been hypocritical when it comes to, as you say, like a Palestinian uh, exception. I do, however, think that the standards for members of Congress are reasonably different. Even if you're an opponent of cancel culture, it's entirely fair to say members of Congress should be held to a different, held to a different standard than a comedian or an actor or an actor or something like that. And if it's, you know, you can then talk about whether they, what they think about everything that Trump has said. <laughs> There's hypocrisy in that too. Um, I wish Republicans got out of bed every morning and, you know, actually wanted to do something and not just whine um, about what they see as wokeness or cancel culture, but uh, we 
we generally just have to settle for the whining. That's a, that's a good point. These are all Trump supporters, at least they were in the last election cycle. And Trump probably says more things, more anti-Semitic things in a single day than Omar has said in her lifetime. Like he's, he's, he's like, a, Israel controls Congress and like- gonna, He did say that, Yeah, he said, he? I, yeah. I, he's said, they're so good with money. And like, he, he's, he's just constantly saying explicitly anti-Semitic things. And of course he has like, Jewish grandchildren, his daughter is Jewish. Right, and he's like, they're gonna be great with money. But this is an example of where Republicans um, I think understand how those definitions, like I don't think anybody would say that Donald Trump, a man who's, whose daughter, who he loves, is Jewish, is anti-Semitic um, by their definition. But if you're inflating that definition, um, it's going to get uncomfortable when you have to look at certain people who you would not consider. And so we just have inflated these definitions to the point where the political football is you toss it around and it's cheapened, uh, I think, the actual definitions to the point where we can't agree anymore on like what actually is very much objectionable rhetoric. Um, and that's a really sad state of affairs. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.